90-year-old Cardinal Joseph Zen is arrested in Hong Kong. The Chinese Communist Party restricts non-essential outbound activities of Chinese citizens. High salary of nucleic acid testers in China is exposed. Hello, welcome to Sound of Hope News. My name is Daniela Wolensack, and today is May 16th. The 90-year-old retired Catholic bishop, Joseph Zen, was arrested in Hong Kong under national security law on Wednesday night, May 11th. He is alleged for collusion with foreign forces and being associated with a now-defunct 612 Humanitarian Relief Fund. Three others were detained alongside him for the same reason. They are former legislator Margaret Ng, singer Dennis Ho, and academic scholar Hui Peng Kyung. The 612 Humanitarian Relief Fund began June 12, 2019, to help protesters with medical aid, psychological counseling, legal advice, and emergency financial relief. It began after officers used unnecessary force against mass protesters in the pro-democracy movement. The fund seized operation in August 2021 after being investigated by the National Security Department. Benedict Rogers, chief executive of human rights group Hong Kong Watch, said in a statement, Today's arrest signaled beyond a doubt that Beijing intends to intensify its crackdown on basic rights and freedoms in Hong Kong. Vatican spokesperson Matteo Bruni said in a press release, The Holy See has learned with concern the news of Cardinal Zen's arrest and is following the development of the situation with extreme attention. Cardinal Zen served as the sixth bishop of Hong Kong and has been outspoken on many sensitive issues regarding human rights, political freedom and religious liberty. Though he retired on April 15, 2009, his strong ties with pro-democracy activists has continually influenced Hong Kong and attracted criticism from Beijing. At Zen's 90th birthday party on January 13th, some of his associates called him a great gift of God to Hong Kong. Lord Alton said, Cardinal Zen is being unwavering in his courage and determination not to betray all those who have suffered for their faith at the hands of the Chinese Communist Party, according to Register. Beijing has a notorious history of arresting and jailing priests and bishops, with many still unaccounted for in recent decades. Shortly after the Hong Kong national security law passed on June 2020, Cardinal Zen said that he was prepared to suffer arrest and trials under the new law. On his Facebook page, he posted a video stating, If right and proper words were considered against their law, I will endure all the suing, trials and arrests. Numerous predecessors have endured similarly. Benedict Rogers has known the Cardinal for more than 20 years. He said the Cardinal is a moral and spiritual giant, whose fortitude, humility, compassion and conviction have been an inspiration to him. Numerous international human rights leaders criticized the arrests. In Washington, Representative Chris Smith co-chair of the Tom Lantos Human Rights Commission and ranking member of the Congressional Executive Commission on China, called the detentions an egregious abuse of human rights and religious freedom that should chill freedom-loving people the world over, according to Catholic News Service. The White House also called to immediately release the cardinal arrested in Hong Kong. The principal deputy press secretary and deputy assistant to the president, Karine Jean-Pierre, emphasized that freedom of expression is critical to prosperous and secure societies. She called on the Chinese regime and Hong Kong authorities to cease targeting Hong Kong's advocates and to immediately release those who have been unjustly detained and charged, referring to Cardinal Joseph Zen and the others arrested on Wednesday. After being questioned for hours, Cardinal Zen was released on bail at around 11.15 p.m. and returned to his home with the Hong Kong Salesians. The other individuals arrested were also released on bail. China appears to be going into a nationwide lockdown. The CCP Immigration Bureau announced in a news release on the evening of May 12th that Xu Ganlu, Vice Minister of the Ministry of Public Security and Director of the Immigration Bureau, 
had held a meeting with the party group and ordered those non-essential outbound activities of Chinese citizens be severely restricted and that the issuance of entry and exit documents to be strictly approved. The Immigration Bureau's notice soon led to a Weibo hashtag called Severely Restrict Chinese Citizens' Unnecessary Exit Activities, which was followed by reports from official media at all levels of the Communist Party. A rumor on the internet on the 11th said that the security patrol at Shanghai Pudong Airport had instructions from above to increase security checks abroad and to destroy on the spot the permanent resident cards of suspicious people found to have hatred of the country and the party, and malicious exit motives. In his live program, commentator Gong Zishen said, From this notice from Pudong Airport, the authorities are treating people who want to leave China as criminals and are trying to prevent them from escaping the prison. It is entirely up to the person on duty to decide, and if he says you are suspicious, you are suspicious. Then Gong Zishen suggested, escape as soon as you can. Lai Jianping of the Chinese University of Political Science and Law analyzes that the CCP has three motives. First, to tie all Chinese people firmly to its chariot and not allow them to escape. Second, to reduce Chinese people's contact with the West so that they can be better brainwashed and controlled. And third, the CCP wants to retain its very limited foreign exchange due to China's economic depression. A netizen wrote, It is not necessary to leave the country, not necessary to leave the province, not necessary to leave the city, not necessary to leave the house, and not necessary to make a sound, not necessary to be born. The report is titled An Overview of Refugees Fleeing Religious Persecution Worldwide and notes that religious persecution in mainland China has intensified under Xi Jinping's administration. In addition, the Chinese Communist government has engaged in a transnational crackdown on many religious minorities seeking asylum in the host country, which Freedom House, a non-governmental organization, has called the most complex, global and comprehensive crackdown in the world. Last month, the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom highlighted that Falun Gong and others are particularly vulnerable to persecution by the Chinese Communist Party. Many Falun Gong practitioners have been forced to flee the country, but are subject to constant harassment and threats abroad. This time, for the first time, the Commission condemned the Chinese Communist leaders for religious persecution. The report says that the CCP uses its economic and geopolitical influence to pressure foreign governments to force victims to return to their home countries through Skynet and fox hunt operations, which employ various forms of involuntary repatriation. Agents have been sent abroad to intimidate, coerce, lobby, and even kidnap refugees. Tibetan Buddhists fleeing to neighboring Nepal, Europe, and the United States, as well as Uyghurs fleeing to other countries, have been subjected to these tactics. Workers giving people nucleic acid tests in China receive extraordinary salaries. Since the outbreak of the epidemic in mainland China, nucleic acid testing has become a regular practice. A few days ago, a super high salary for nucleic acid samplers was exposed, drawing public attention on the internet to the new interest groups created by the Chinese Communist Party's stringent epidemic control. On May 12th, China First Financial and Hexun.com reported that since late April, Beijing, Shanghai, Hangzhou, and other places have been bombarded with requests for nucleic acid testing, resulting in a huge demand for workers. For example, 10,000 free nucleic acid sampling sites have been set up in Hangzhou, requiring people to take a test every 48 hours. Based on the population of Hangzhou, it is estimated that there are about 1,200 people for one testing site. If the rest of the country follows this ratio, in urban areas at least 750,000 new testing sites will need it to be added, and nucleic acid sampling staff will require at least a million people. A medical investment management company in Shanghai reveals that a nucleic acid testing nurse received a daily salary of 148 US dollars, as well as bonuses, staff trips, and stock options, while the average Chinese daily salary is slightly under 45 US dollars. Some nucleic testing staff even receive a daily salary of 300 US dollars. According to Land Media reports, a message suspected to be from the Shanghai Soma Medical Laboratory reads, 
assistant new crown testing lab technician earns 1,500 yuan, 220 US dollars per day. Intermediate new crown testing technician earns 2,000 yuan, 300 US dollars per day. Food and accommodation are also included, as well as an additional reward for 10,000 yuan for 30 days of work. These salaries have been discussed by many Chinese netizens on Weibo, who have questioned the attractive conditions and the large demand, but asked, where can I apply? Thanks for listening, and please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.